Hi and welcome again to another video tutorial on passing the FE exam. Tonight we're going to cover a topic that uh, falls under the dynamics heading as far as the exam is concerned, but um, this goes way back to like freshman physics class, <clears throat> or at least it did when I learned it. So um, if you're in that class now, this might help you out as well. So first thing you need to do is if you have the uh, Supplied reference manual, which is looks a little bit like this. If you turn to page 55, there's the equations you need for this. We're going to go over projectile motion today. And there you see there's this little section. There's six formulas and a little diagram that shows you what it means. But if you don't have this, that's okay, because I'm going to go ahead and write them down for you right now. So go ahead and copy these down while you're at it. So this is for projectile motion. Let's say AX acceleration in the X equals zero. VX, since velocity, equals V naught, original velocity, times the cosine of theta. Theta being the angle of the initial <clears throat> trajectory in the projectile motion. And then we'll say x, which is a position, equals v naught cosine theta in parentheses times t plus x naught, which is the original position. Okay, and then so we have three equations in the x. We, you know, uh, obviously we would have three equations in the y also. So a y, so the acceleration of the y, equals negative g, and that is the gravitational constant, okay? So obviously um, you're going to be accelerating in the y axis if you have your x and your y gravity is going to be pulling you down. So then we have vy, velocity in the y, and this is similar, except you have that gravity again, negative gt plus v naught, and since we're going in the y direction, it is sine theta, and finally the y position is negative gt squared over 2 plus v naught sine theta times t plus y naught. And again, these are all on page 55 in the latest edition of the FE reference manual. Okay. <clears throat> so probably the best thing to do is just get started with an example. Let's go ahead and make one up here. Let's say you're going to kick a soccer ball. You got a really powerful kick so you can kick it at an initial velocity of 50 meters per second and a 40 degree angle from the horizontal. So this is V naught and this is theta. And you're on a flat soccer field, totally level. So from that we know that Y naught equals zero. And so our first question is how long will it fly? In other words, we want to find t. Well, if we look at our equations that we have, there's nothing really obvious that, you know, will, will just tell us t without needing more information. Okay, so we need to think about this intuitively. This is where you have to be an engineer and not just, you know, plug and chug. 
if we're on level ground, that's supposed to be a straight line. And you're kicking a ball. And you make this nice arc. Well, if you think about it, the ball will rise until it gets to its peak. And then right at this instant right here, you will have a velocity of zero. And that's also, you know, halfway through its flight path. So you know we're also at one half t. And this is t, this is what we want to find. So we can use our equations now that we have um, something to put in for v, and we have the corresponding t. So if we use this equation, vy equals negative gt plus v naught sine theta. And again, we're going to set vy equal to, to 0. And we are going to say t in this case is 1 half t. We can do some algebra, and that leads us to 2 v naught sine theta over g equals t. And this equals, now we're just plugging in what we already know. We have for v naught 50 meters per second. sine, and we know theta equals 40 degrees, and g is the gravitational constant, 9.8 meters per second squared, and don't do what I just did, which was forget to bring your 2 along, so I'll fix that mistake right there. Okay, and if you uh, run this through your calculator, you get an answer of 6.5 five seconds. So that is the answer to that question. Now you might get on your exam, you might get a multi-part question. So let's continue along. Say, how far away will it land? So you're looking for your range or in other words, we want to know what is x. Well, now that we know t, we can just go back to our equations out of the manual. And this becomes much more simple because we have this equation here. x equals v naught cosine theta t plus x naught. And since we're looking for a relative distance, um, we'll just call where you're standing when you kick it, we'll just call that the origin and make x go to zero. So this is pretty easy now. We have our initial velocity is 50 meters per second times cosine 40 degrees. And we know t because we just figured that out. 6.55 seconds. And the answer to this is 251 meters. Now, if you can kick a soccer ball 251 meters, uh, you might have a career as a professional athlete or, you know, I don't know, bodybuilder or something like that. But uh, it's probably a little unrealistic, but for the purposes of this example, this is mathematically correct anyway. So that should get you through some now procedures. In both of these parts, we've assumed that you're basically starting at the origin. So you're on flat surface, and um, you just you're only concerned with the distance away from the starting point. But suppose that weren't the case. Let's continue on with this example and say you're still on the soccer field. Same thing. Everything's the same except you bring in like a man lift and you have a 50 foot 
platform. Actually, we better make this 50 meters since everything is in metric. Okay, so you're standing on a 50 meter platform and by some miracle you can kick this again. All the same parameters at, you know, a V naught of 50 meters per second and a theta of 40 degrees. Okay, but in this case, your Y naught equals 50 meters because you're up on the platform. What is the range X now? Well, this isn't quite as easy to get at. Adding this why not at 50 meters in there kind of throws a wrench in the whole thing. So we're going to have to do some algebra, but that's okay. We can get it done. So going into our little toolbox of equations that has in your book, let's pull one out here and say x equals negative gt squared over 2 plus v naught sine theta t plus y naught and we can do some algebra here and get gt squared over 2 plus v naught sine theta t plus y naught minus y, which we are going to set equal to 50 meters, all so this equals to zero. You just look at the equations you have, and find out what you don't know, and pick away at it. And hopefully do it quickly enough that you don't waste a lot of time on that exam. So if we're going to plug and chug here, we get negative 9.82 meters per second squared over... 2 t squared plus 50 meters per second sine theta times t and now we don't know t because we just you know changed everything up so we're gonna have to solve for t theta being 40 degrees plus 50 meters and that equals zero. Simplifying we get uh, for negative 4.91 t squared plus 32.14 t plus 50 equals 0 and if that looks familiar it's because this is quadratic and that means we need the quadratic equation exciting quadratic equation is a good thing to memorize but if you don't you can go to page 21 in your reference manual and as you'll see if something is in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac quantity over 2a so, again, we're just going to plug and chug here. In this case, t, because that's what we're really looking for, is negative 32.14 plus or minus square root 
32.14 squared minus 4 times 4.91 times 50 that whole quantity over 2 times 4.91 again which will give you you have to do this plus or minus remember so you will have negative 1.29 7.84 and we haven't figured out how to go back in time yet so that doesn't work t is equal to 7.84 seconds so now you found t even though it's not really what you want but you can just use that to go back to your equation toolbox again and get this guy out x equals v naught cosine theta t plus x zero and we're still gonna say x naught equals zero because we're really just concerned with the distance from where you're standing equals 50 meters per second cosine 40 degrees times 7.84 seconds which is your time and that will give you approximately 300 meters and that is that so there you just learned projectile motion um, I hope this helps, and check back at my website for more lessons on how to pass your FE exam. Thank you.